So with the last Fan Friday showing off a Soak Shedinja, a lot of people were confused by the existence of this Pokemon and what it actually does. Now this is very understandable because of Pokemon Sun and Moon. It introduced millions of new players to the game and because of Pokemon Bank kind of delaying the release for a lot of Pokemon, some people might not be familiar with some of the craziest ones and Shedinja doesn't get a lot of play to begin with. I actually saw like a dozen comments of people wondering why Shedinja only has one hit points and what could be going on here and this might be a good video for even experienced players because Wonder Guard is doing some really screwy things in the seventh generation that people don't really understand like the interactions with Power of Alchemy and Passimian's passer ability or receiver ability so let's go and talk about the craziness of Shedinja and we'll also be talking about some trivia as well as the ability itself so yeah what you see is what you get with the Shedinja it is a one hit point Pokemon and that is because of the Wonder Guard ability. Now, you might already hear jokes and memes about this of like a Wonder Guard Arceus or a legendarily hacked Pokemon that can only be damaged by super effective moves. And that's kind of it on the Shedinja. You can only get hit by super effective moves and indirect damage. So, all those people that were saying, what about Hail? What about Leech Seed? Confusion? Burn? You know, a lot of things. Pretty much indirect damage. There's a ton of it in the game. And yes, that will instantly KO the Shedinja. So, the Soak Shedinja is pretty much not true truly unkillable unless you do a lot of other things like safety goggles. That's also why the Tapu Fini is very strong on this Shedinja as well. So it can't die to status and stuff and then there's also the item safety goggles. So safety goggles make it immune to powder moves and damage from sandstorm or hail and then pretty much after that there's going to be very few things that can actually KO the Shedinja without its Wonder Guard activating and it eating a super effective hit. Now one big problem is that Bug and Ghost has a lot of weaknesses. That it has flying, rock, ghost, fire, and dark as weaknesses. Now there are Pokemon that have like six and seven weaknesses so I guess it's not all bad for the Shedinja but that's really funny because like no, no neutral hits, no resistances, it's just all immunities and super effective hits. So that's kind of the shenanigans of the Shedinja but just kind of shows yeah it has those small points where it is vulnerable and that's pretty much it which is why the Soak Shedinja makes it only weak to grass and electric and then that's why it can be called unkillable because there's so little counterplay behind a Soak water type Shedinja that if the opponent doesn't have it it becomes unkillable and then you just lose. So that's why I call it the unkillable Shedinja because we see it happen in these battles that the opponent has to forfeit or they just sit there spinning their wheels for no reason since the battle is over once Shedinja gets a hold. Now also Shedinja has access to a couple of different things that it can use such as the Hone Claws. So Hone Claws is going to raise the attack and accuracy by one then after that can protect to stay safe it can do all kinds of really fun things and it can even use focus sash as an item so pretty much the big items you're going to see on the Shedinja are going to be the focus sash or the safety goggles and focus sash actually works you are technically at full hit points when you have one hit points so you just it, it just does nothing it is the only time in the game we will see zero damage occur unless you're like a focus band at one hit points or something else like that so Shedinja gets pretty interesting now another big issue with that video that confused a lot of people is that swords dance so if you look at the level up for Shedinja or even just the TM moves to be really upfront about it we do not see swords dance anywhere here yet even on Pokemon showdown it's acknowledged as not an illegal move that we can see that something else would be considered illegal now this is because of an interesting little bug that occurred in the fourth generation that Shedinja would actually copy the moves of a Ninjask that was learning a move via its level up when evolved from a Ninkata. So you could get a lot of weird things and that means I believe at level 24, 25, whatever level that Ninjask learns Swords Dance, if you evolve it then the Shedinja will have a Swords Dance even though it can't get it through its normal level up. Therefore the Swords Dance Shedinja is technically legal but if you are using it in a format for sixth generation or something that uses the pentagon or the clover you're not going to be able to use it because it just doesn't exist like that so it's a very strange pokemon and it does have a lot of power but at the same time if your shedinja is unkillable then home claws works just well because you're going to be gaining a lot of damage and then you can run something like the phantom force to also keep yourself a little bit extra safe and do some crazy damage so that's kind of the breakdown of how Shedinja works and I'm not really gonna be doing guide I've already done guides on the Pokemon uh, you can also use entrainment 
to give it sturdy so sturdy ability is like a permanent focus sash so that makes another unkillable shedinja breakdown that sure they can hit you but that means the shedinja can only die indirectly which means you can do something like paralyze it you can use thunder wave on the shedinja and then that means that well it's only going to be susceptible to something like a status move and then that's why you have the safety goggles so it takes a lot of craziness to set up so there's a way of getting shedinja to a point where it can really only get self ko'd by a confusion struggle leech seed and I don't even know if there's anything else after that. So there are some really weird setups that you can do, but they do take a lot of time. And Shedinja is a frail Pokemon at one hit points that can be taken out right there, especially in doubles. So it's this weird gambling Pokemon, but whenever it shows up, it does cool things. And the Soak is really powerful because, oh, they're anticipating hitting Shedinja super effective, and then it becomes water, and then that means it's not super effective. So then the opponent has to respond right there. But now let's go and break down the Wonder Guard ability. So Wonder Guard was actually really hilarious back in the third generation. It just said, super effective hits. And I remember this growing up as a kid. Now you can kind of piece this together pretty quickly because as a kid, I used Ninkata and I was able to get the Shedinja. I thought it was like an amazing Pokemon. One hit points, all this weirdness about it, and then it wasn't dying until it ate something like a flying type hit. So only super effective moves will hit. That got clarified. And then its mysterious power will only let super effective moves hit the Pokemon. So that's pretty fun. And I can understand why Game Freak has made it to where indirect damage also auto KOs the Pokemon. Because imagine if there was no other way of taking out the Shedinja. I was hoping for maybe some kind of buff in the 7th generation. It looks like we didn't get it, but it's still something pretty crazy right here. So, as you can see right here, the trivia is uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Roleplay fails if the target has the ability Wonder Guard. Skill Swap fails if either Pokemon has Wonder Guard. Wonder Guard cannot be copied by Power Alchemy or Receiver. So let's go and break that down. The reason why I talked about entrainment earlier is that is the only way of modifying Shedinja. Because if you're trying to use something like Skill Swap, well, Wonder Guard isn't allowed to go anywhere. I think that that needs to be the main rule. So the rule of thumb is that Wonder Guard can't go anywhere. Now, there's also a really weird combination that you can get Mimic on Shedinja through the Fire Red Leaf Green Tutor way back in the day. So yeah, there it is. Mimic Generation 3 Shedinja. And then you like Mimic the Entrainment and then you entrain Wonder Guard onto another Pokemon. The pe one that people prefer to do is like the Electros. You give Electros um, rest, something else, it doesn't really matter, and then Air Balloon, that way it has no weaknesses, and if you try to status, status it, it can just rest it off. So there's some really strange combos out there. Now the interesting thing about the Mimic is that this is kind of doable in the new generations because of hyper training, so if you bring this guy all the way through, you can do that, and then the combos get kind of nuts from there. So Wonder Guard kind of works like that, and that's why you can do things to the Shedinja with the entrainment or with something that tries to go and remove its ability. And also, as you can see right here, if you have something that ignores the ability, such as Mold Breaker, Terra Volt, Turbo Blaze, or a move like Moon Guys Beam and Sun Steel Strike, that also ignores the Shedinja. So Shedinja technically getting nerfed against certain legendary matchups, it's kind of weird and stuff like right there. But yeah, you just can't skill swap it. That was like the first thing everyone thinks. Wonder Guard, what happens if I skill swap that? Well, you can't. So that's kind of it, and Wonder Guard does not affect moves that do not do damage, such as Tail Whip or Poison Powder, and it does not prevent any indirect damage, so there's all kinds of fun things. Also, Entry Hazard, yeah. If the opponent goes and puts up a Stealth Rock, Shedinja dies instantly. Pretty fun. And for any of you guys out there that are thinking about the Worry Seed, Worry Seed actually works for negating Wonder Guard as an ability. Remember, you can do things to the Shedinja, to the Wonder Guard, but you can't take Wonder Guard and plop it onto something else without a lot of really weird hassle and whatnot. And one interesting side note about the Worry Seed is that it only doesn't work against Pokemon that have something that's intrinsic to that Pokemon, that if it needs that ability to function basically, then it can't get rid of it. So, Truant Ability, Multi-Type, Stance Change, Schooling, Comatose, Shields Down, Disguise, Archaea System, or Battle Bond. So yeah, it doesn't affect any of these because without that, the Pokemon can't change forms, it breaks down a lot of what the Pokemon is capable of doing, and it just kind of doesn't make sense because it's a form change or something like that, and if you screw around with that, it looks like Game Freak doesn't even want to mess with those kinds of implications right there. And it would also be pretty broken if you just Worry Seed and then you turn Wishy Washy School Form into Wishy Washy Lowest Base Stat Total Pokemon in the game form. So that's kind of a drawback right there. And also we can go and scroll down to the bottom of the page to the trivia where there is a lot of it. 
So Shedinja is immune to all one-hit KO knockout moves unless a Pokemon with Aerolate uses Guillotine or Horn Drill. And that's something interesting to think about because Guillotine and Horn Drill aren't status moves technically that they do have a category of physical and if you look at sheer cold you know these actually are damaging moves therefore they do directly interact with the ability and if you change it to something that is supposed to acknowledge as a super effective hit then shedinja can be affected by it also let's talk about the one hit point trivia because that was like one of the big things like one hit points on shedinja is pretty crazy some of the more interesting ones are just Shedinja involving defenses and weird aspects of damage, such as having only one hit point, Shedinja's defense and special defense are normally impractical in battle. However, if it receives a substitute through Baton Pass, so getting into very niche breakdowns right here, yeah, it's like if it has one hit points, why doesn't it just have one defense, one special defense, and then maybe more stats elsewhere? Well, that's because these defense and special defense will be factored into damage calculation. Therefore, there's a chance that you can hit a Shedinja, not have the substitute break, and then have it hide behind the substitute forever as it still hangs on to one hit points. However, if Shedinja tries to use substitute, it will not work, and rest will always fail because it's already at full health always. It's kind of the inverse of what we saw with Sturdy and the Baton Pass, so that's something really interesting. If Shedinja were to use Curse, it would faint as a result because Curse always takes at least one hit points from a Ghost-type user, so that's something that happens right there. Also, damage-wise, Shedinja gets access to the final gambit, therefore its final gambit will only do one damage and if it uses pain split because of the averaging of the hit points it will cut the target's hit points in half like a super fang and also rare candy was able to revive Shedinja in the third generation or if you revive with a revive it will go up to full hit points and it's the only Pokemon that will do so. Then we have another example of sturdy. For example, being hit by a Worry Seed, followed by a Skill Swap, and from something with a Sturdy, it can survive any direct attack, and then only indirect damage will be able to damage it. So there we go, guys. Um, you can go and check out more of these details for yourself, or maybe you can just pause the video right here and then read these things off the screen. It's Yeah, here it is. Like, if Soak is used to make Shedinja a water type, it will have immunities to 16 of the 18 attack types. That's pretty ridiculous right there. So the trivia is all over the place on the Shedinja, and this is mostly for the new fans that really didn't know what was going on in the Soak Shedinja video. Maybe we'll get a sturdy Shedinja, and I'm not even sure about Mimic Shedinja anymore. It's just kind of all kinds of weirdness going on when it comes to the this Pokemon right here. So I love talking about it. A lot of people like hearing about it. So we got some fun trivia with this crazy little guy. And I hope you guys at least enjoy the video. Maybe learn something. I think that this is uh, very useful because of the way that Wonder Guard behaves in the 7th generation. And I still get comments every day like Power of Alchemy, Receiver, where's this combo for Fan Fridays? Uh, what happens if this happens with the Shedinja? I think that's, I think that might actually, there might be comments like that on the Fan Friday video of the Soak. It's like, oh, that's got nothing on Power of Alchemy Muck. It's just something that you can't do. So, there we go, guys. Hope you all enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.